Wow, incredible barn finds. Look at this. So I've been invited up to Nebraska to check out by far the biggest barn find I've ever run across. I mean, this one blows all the rest of them out of the water. Like 13 sheds totally full of cars, trucks, tractors, collectibles. We're gonna check it out, see what's in here. So we're out here today at Pioneer Village. This is in Menden, Nebraska. And this is out back in the excess overflow storage barns. The museum is not closing. They are selling some excess inventory and that'll be on the Big Iron online auction. Andy Birdsell is the one involved with that, representative of Big Iron, and the first sale goes live September 15th. It is online only, so I'm out here just to look around and see what's here. This is the remains of international fire truck, maybe. Oh, it's got red paint on it, so probably fire truck. Yeah, these old trucks, they mounted the radiator in the back like that. Kind of a strange range. Buick headlights on it. And somebody later on decided to move the airflow radiator up to the front. Seventy two or so Volvo one forty five. Mustard yellow seventies car. A cool piece. Definitely European. These had the three. Digits for the thousands, six digit odometer, be the right terminology. So that's 177K. Just getting broken in. That's a good old car there. And we've got the Vagabond. The old Kaiser Fraser. This one being the Fraser. Fraser is the rare model because they quit production before the Kaiser. Neither of these companies lasted super, super long, but you can see there the kind of clamshell hatchback design that all lifts up. Has a tailgate on the bottom. Great old relic of our country's transportation history. And the 1960 Biscayne, very well preserved original car. Not perfect, but not a rust bucket. Wow. This was a super, super nice car when they parked it. 90,000 on it. It's got the cool racing floor mat. That old car probably still had good paint on it. It'd be a cherry survivor if it could have made indoors. 
But that paint I think will mostly save and the patinas got a neat look to it. We got the international travel all. This one's got the wood grain paneling. This one's textured top, but not a vinyl top. Pretty nice shape inside. See the quarter panels are pretty, pretty munched by the tin worms. That's a good old vacation wagon there. I don't think I'd really worry about the quarters. Just let her be what she is. K5 Blazer. It's been used pretty hard. Anything that's ever had a plow on it doesn't have an easy life but still worthy of restoration it's got the half top not sure exact model year on this probably 84 5 6 somewhere in there 49 ford has the little taper Park lights, the refrigerator style door handles. This one's really nice inside. Not like super, super cherry, but still better than average. Can't see the mileage, 05, so. That was pretty common back in the day. They'd get 100,000 miles out of the car. And and at a hundred thousand miles, people would either have the perception it was worn out or in a lot of cases, the reality to go along with it. But you see a car like this, I mean, even time capsule condition, they put it away. It was probably starting to look shabby compared to the new 1963s that were on the lot. I think that was when they parked it. 63 tag on the... Yeah, 63 tag there. So you think about it too, the differences in technology of a car from 49 to 63. You know, this thing still has a flathead V8. It's still got, you know, basic natural fiber upholstery pretty pretty bland colors by 63 you could have gotten hard tops with a lot of anodized aluminum trim they're just total total styling changes as well and the rest of the technology too 63 had an alternator for GM and Mopar, Ford wouldn't have had an alternator quite yet, but just the speed and the comfort and the user friendliness, these old cars, a lot of times when they parked them, it was not just for age and wear, but there were great leaps in innovation and technology too. And this is the old 41 to 6 Chevrolet cab over. Looks like fairly original truck, but probably has had some sprucing done to it. All that paint has been redone. Pretty attractive. Call it a older restoration or refurbishment. Let's 
grab handles are specific to a COE. Those actually have a orientation away rather than straight. A lot of people they'll put straight handles on, but that's not the actual correct. So four spoke steering wheel is specific to the COE, I'm fairly sure. Not an expert on these. Any of this stuff that's World War II era has a neat aesthetic to it. And over here, this is the one that went and retrieved a lot of these old relics off the farms. International Lodestar. This thing would have had not a great top speed, but probably a lot of torque. And back in the day, it got the job done. Every one of those scratches and marks and oil spots tells a story of relics that it brought to the village here probably started life as a fire truck you got the red paint there and also six digit odometer only 111,000 on it so probably fairly local trips that all of this stuff came here A Studebaker truck looking pretty sharp. A Kansas piece. So this is the area where they take the pictures for the auction. There's a cool auto gas engine, probably easily 100 years old or more. Have to be familiar with the technology to get some of this old stuff working. New Holland square baler with a four cylinder Wisconsin V motor. Another New Holland square baler, also with a four cylinder Wisconsin. These old relics being sold on the Big Iron online auction, they all came out of these sheds. Tons and tons of relics to show you. few old coke coolers a lot of these relics you wish could tell stories but coke coolers for sure got the chambers gas range <laughs> it's got an interesting little corner pedestal lights on it kind of cool There's a bunch. All of these came out of those buildings. Alice Chalmers with the Snowblade International Shovel Blade. Kind of a cool old Cascade dryer. American history. John Deere Combine. Lots of vintage planners. 
You name it. Old 2829 Model A cab. And then here, this is a Cushman Golfster. I think a Cushman for a wide, wide range of motorized products. And I wasn't actually aware that they made golf carts. So I did learn something today out here. Tiny, tiny little combine. Itty bitty. Just got the corn header used up. Come up the ladder here. So you can see this auxiliary top here. It's actually made by Heston Corporation, which is still in business. I believe they've kind of become part of a conglomerate, I think, with white, and it was called. Agco now. Now I get the patina on that Model A cab. That was really something. Just rows of equipment that they've pulled out that's being sold. Is that the base of a visible gas pump probably? And there's a 1930s Wayne pump. It's got a good Art Deco look to it. Jail bar Ford, 42 through 47. And lots and lots of primitive agricultural pieces. There's a truck from a rail car. Just imagine such a different time and place in history. Like that thing, all those individual pieces were cast at foundries. They're made out of steel here in America. Different, different place and time. Very early case tractor, early farm all, Twin City, there's a Romley. Now that's a rare tractor there. Kind of small for a Rumley. See the old notes that the guys put on here from when they were working on them. It's a lot of history here. Wood Brothers Harvester. Not sure what this old piece was. Another what's it corner. Probably this whole video you could about call a what's it corner. 
A lot of question marks. People back in the day knew what they were, but we got the Wallace. That's a fairly rare tractor. Definitely not. Wallace around every corner. These are built by Massey Harris. 1916 patent date, so this thing's probably 100 years old, you'd say. Here's a big, probably a binder of some sort. This stuff looks really rudimentary and really primitive by today's standards, but realistically, the guys that had this stuff back in the day were over the moon to have it because it saved huge amount of hand labor effort load it on the wagon to either take to market or to use feed animals or feed people antique wooden manure spreader Well, still looks like it could be pretty functional. Who would use it? Glad you asked. Actually see a lot of the people from Amish country maintain these and keep them in service. So an old relic like that may not just be for looks. More antique equipment they pulled out of the storages here. Wow, incredible barn finds. Look at this. Antique Nash, about a 30 model or so. They just come off the farms. So much history here. It's a wood bodied car, so there'd be quite a lot involved to bring it back. Ninety year old veteran relic. And this is a whippet. It's got the old knobby snow tires on it. I'm sure because they needed them. Whippet is also structural wood body. This one's approximately 27, 28. This still has the nickel plated grill shell. I don't know, it could be chrome. It chrome's about dull enough to look like nickel, but that's kind of a way to date. Chrome was first used about 1927 or 28. 
That was a cool piece because it's got the branded logo and the headlights. A lot of people think these old cars were just a few brands, you know, like if you bought a cheap car, you bought a Model T, but you would have had a choice between a lot of basic entry level four cylinder little transportation cars just beyond a Model T. You know, you would have had your Star and your Durant and your Whippet and late 20s like this, the closed coach body style like this was rapidly overtaking the open Roadster touring bodies. They had quite a few people that just ready to be out of the elements. You know, the old buggies. He'd have window curtains and lap robes and whatever you could to keep yourself out of the elements. But finally people realized that just enclose the body and have a lot more of a Resistance to the elements. This old car also a whip it. Built by Willie's Overland. This one's probably going to be about a 30. And you can see just in that short amount of time the change in styling that they had early car to a more of a 30s style. 3031, they were also getting into a lot more stylized dashes and dash clusters. You can see this is just the very rudimentary beginnings of that. This old truck, 37, I believe, Ford. Just another old timer. Somebody's put the <laughs> pipe exhaust stacks coming out. Got a case of bottles in the bed. Plymouth, 29 or 30 probably. Very, very similar to the Model A. This one's been converted over to seal beam headlights. So it's got a little different look to the front end than stock. Plymouth is a structural steel body. You can see on that top rail above the windows where there is wood in the body, but it's not structural composite wood. It's a uh, purely decorative just for finishing the upholstery and having a place to anchor it. And if anybody fancies a woody station wagon, my Morris Minor is for sale. Ah, shameless plug. So, this Ford is also for sale as well. This one's gonna need everything, but there may be a car that's a little more common like this, 41 to 48, several years of production in there. Maybe a chance that somebody's gotten some plans or some wood available. There is a lot of work to putting one of these together because you just have to fit all the pieces. It's not like steel parts where you 
take them out of a crate when you buy them from the catalog and just bolt them on or weld them on. It's a labor of love to rebuild one of these, but when you got her finished, you got something that's pretty legit value collector car. So this was in the museum, maybe at one time, because it's got the placard on it, but Harold Warp bought this in 58. Still got that 58 tag on it. So here's the star, I was mentioning before, just little basic competitor to the Model T. That's a neat car. Apologize for the lighting in here, it's not optimal, but it's part of the mystery of a place like this. This one's got the structural wood in it. Four cylinder. So we're made by Durant. If you ever want a fascinating read, go investigate the biography of Billy Durant. He's key player in automotive history, General Motors and beyond. Got the approximately 1930 Chevrolet here. This is two-door coach. This one's got the round gauges. Kind of hard to see in there, but probably can't see that at all. But 29 and 30 were real similar. One had round gauges, one had oval. That's the best way to tell them apart. This one's been kind of refurbished probably in the 50s, 40s maybe, just painted blue with house paint. Seal beam conversion. Does have kind of a charming vibe to it. Just imagine a story a car like that has, you know, like somebody probably bought this for 15 or 20 bucks, 25 bucks running and driving and just looking shabby and went and bought $5 worth of paint and ten dollars worth of materials and several nights or weekends of time spruced it up and probably sold it for a hundred bucks and then fortunately it didn't get all used up and came here to be preserved This guy here is a Dodge. Dodge, also like the Plymouth, is all steel body, no structural wood. This one's about 25, 26 probably. But a car like that, just really rigid structure to it. About the only advantage that the wood-bodied cars had was that on the bumpy roads they were quieter, but they definitely required maintenance and upkeep. Good old veteran lineup. Here's row of vehicles and trucks that have come out. It's Pontiac, I believe, 72.
last year before the big safety bumper. Wow, this thing's still got the original window sticker. That thing was sold in Wichita too. 400, 400. Pretty basic option list. AC was still optional in those days. This old car, pretty original. It could be, actually they've redone this whole interior. Read on the door panels, upper with new cloth. They've sanded down the bottoms and repainted them. Things showing 23K, so certainly turned over. But what a fantastic old time capsule that thing is. I don't know, yeah, this whole car's been repainted because there's probably some filler in these quarters, but pretty good job they did on it. A big old car. There's Pioneer Village bus. 67 to 72 Ford. This could be a later one too, 73 to, that's actually probably 73 to 79 style. Old 1980 Chevy pickup. Another Pioneer Village truck. Harold Warp. West Chicago. He was in business and did something else. I think printing. In the Chicago area and then he came here. Somehow found out Nebraska was full of relics and I'm sure he'd done pretty well in business. Had some retirement money to start this place. I'm sure even going and buying this stuff for the prices it was back then, it still took a lot to buy the property and build it and make all the signage. Old 47 to 53 Chevy is a good looking truck. It's got the 216. Old Ford dump truck, 60s, 62, 3, 4, somewhere in there. Maxon was the dealer here in Menden. Things probably never left the county. Got the buzz saw on the trailer with the guard. Step above. Some of the old ones they used to use with the log splitter too. John Deere power unit on there. Antique three-wheeled Toro mower. Whirlwind. It's a unique old relic. Farmall F12. These old things were step above a horse.
very, very early case. Ah, here's their little tug tractor they probably used for moving vehicles and things around. For the days of skid loaders, they got by. There's a Fordson tractor. Probably another F12. These old Fordsons, the guy was telling me, had a tendency to lift up and tip over. And people were actually killed on them. And so when the Fordson company learned of that, they put this little tail on there, almost like the wheelie bars on the drag cars. So that's how you can tell a early Fordson from a late one, is that the later ones have that tail on them. So I just put like a Model T running board for a step on there too. Kept it all forward. A few other vintage items. These are probably like food service warmers, broilers, something like that. It's kind of a cool old dryer. That's actually a really early piece. Wow. That was Harold Warps himself, it says. Wow. Got the Frigidaire by General Motors. That's a freezer. Chrysler Industrial Hemi for an irrigation motor. Old International Harvester Straight Six. Industrial irrigation motor. Cub Cadet Snapper. Unique little tractor with the spring tines. That's a definite oddball. Vintage hay rake. Then a little probably portable tanker of some kind. Not sure what that is. Another what's it corner. And out in this section, these are the courtesy vehicles. So apparently if somebody came from a ways away and would fly in, these were parked at the airport and they left the keys in them and you'd just drive the car here Leave the keys under the mat and come scope out the village. So the guests from further away that flew in, these were the courtesy cars they drove here. This one looks like could have been on display because it has the little stays for the card this car actually has disc brakes i didn't get the hood open so i'm not exactly sure what the drivetrain is in it it'd be cool if it was a six cylinder like the old 240. this old thing 
pretty basic car 71 or 72 custom 500 automatic 71 by the sticker in that van 1g5 or s1mz might tell what the engine is Somebody's popped the hubcaps off, but other than that, this thing is all pretty stock original. And there's two more Chevrolet courtesy cars. This is a 69 Impala. This is the regular coupe. Sports coupe, they called it in the catalog. And these ones had like almost more of a fastback roof line to them. Then the other style was the custom coupe, which was shared with the Caprice. So this is pretty base model Impala. This is like the middle of the line. The bottom of the line, I think you could still get Bel Air and Biscayne two-door post. So there you can see on the side the airport courtesy car to be used only between the Menden Airport and Pioneer Village. It's got all vinyl interior. And here's the old Keyboard. Wow, this is cool. Okay, so <sighs> okay, you will find on hook a key for Pioneer Village. Please return the key. Should it be in the use? Call this number and we'll pick you up. If this car is found to be used other than to and from Pioneer Village, police have been notified to take matters into their own hands. Cool, cool old history there. Nice grill and bumper. Factory 327 car. This thing's really good old car honestly don't know if that engine would still turn but unfortunately it's gotten kind of pushed into the 66 impala and honestly if you look at it it really didn't hurt any of these cars beyond what they were because the part of the 69 that touched is just the bumper and this 66, somebody had already gotten into a spar or something before. So as long as they gently get them out of here, won't be that bad of a deal. And I think you can buy a full quarter for a 66. So not the end of the world on that. Not the best, but not the end of the world. And this is pretty basic bench seat car. Does have factory AC. Looks like that one was originally white. This one here, probably kind of an almond white. So they have been repainted. Then these old cutlasses, they were the 80s models. See, they're slightly different years. One has a bigger mesh in the grill than the other. 80, 81, 82, 83, somewhere in there. Probably Buick V6s. They could be 
307 Olds, possibly, maybe even a 260 if they were 80 models. Nothing spectacular. I mean, honestly, they've sat long enough. They'd probably be parts cars. Especially considering the one's got the back glass knocked out from the tree. Good parts cars. I mean, there's a lot that still fits a G body, two door under these. Even race car guys might want the frames. Hate to see something that is a relic that survived get torn up and parted down, but really at this point the reality is they just don't have huge collector value. Although if somebody was a fan of Pioneer Village and wanted one for that sake, that would be a better reason than any to take one of these home. And over here we got the McCormick Deering tractor. This thing has been laying here a long time. Got the mulberry tree totally grown into the front wheel there and the back wheel and fender. Got the 79 to 80s Olds Tornado. Don't know why these are here. They could have been maybe Harold's personal cars. Buick Riviera. This Riviera's got a rare option. And that is four wheel disc. Very, very uncommon. Never know how or why they got here. Here's the other courtesy car, the Chevy Lumina. That one they didn't paint yellow, they just left it how she was and slapped some stickers on it and called it good. 62, I believe, Chrysler. Chrysler got a lot of mileage out of this body shell. Basic windshield design was introduced in 57, and your 60 Dodge, 61 Dodges, your DeSotos, your Furies, they got a lot of mileage out of that body style. These Tilted headlights, canted headlights like that. The customizer guys kind of like them. This thing's realistically sat long enough. Probably a parts car. It does have that cool, probably hard to see it at all in here, but it's called the Astrodome speedometer. So that's kind of a George Jetson type of piece. Some of these guys that build like bubbled custom cars like those. And this is the old international truck. This one's from Chicago also. So that was probably something that Harold himself used and then brought here. Pretty beat up, used up. That's actually single wheel, one ton truck. Kind of an odd spec for one of these. Got the road grader grown in the trees. We can't skip the Ford Taurus. This is really iconic car. You look the body style of this and even under the hood and under the car and there's not a huge huge deviation from what we drive now 35 years later I mean they really 
went all out to make this car. It was a bit of a gamble for design and development, but any of the front wheel drive cars we drive today trace a lot of their roots back. I mean, even the dash has a pretty modern look to it. Hoping the sticker's not. Yeah, it is faded. Man, I was hoping to see the date. That'd be cool if this was an original 1986. That's just all faded out. That's kind of rare, too. It's a crank window car. Surely, surely would have been a base model with those crank windows. I mean, it's not in the museum, but it is relic of our country's transportation history. A few more old tractors. Case maybe VAC, Farmall, F12, F20, I'm not sure. That one's got a cool, cool little rig built on it there with the little tanks and who knows what that thing was, hay loader or something. Got the 856 propane, projector parts, white diesel truck, 60s model I'd guess. That's a neat old piece with the pencil nose. The vintage headlights. That's really neat truck inside. Fuller Road Ranger. Don't know the year, but there's an old registration, but it's faded totally out. Cool truck, day cab, no sleeper. More old relics of trucking history. Here we've got a couple trucks. Uh, yeah, so this is, I'd guess before that his company might have been like bookbinding, but I think it was actually building materials. Window screens. Fiberglass window screens, you'd guess. Has a very, very historically significant old truck. Should argue this thing probably realistically should have been in the museum collection because more than anything really tells the story of the museum and what's here but it's on the list to sell that I'm aware of we got the cool old international three-quarter ton pickup that one has got Nebraska mud flaps Corn Husker Triple A decal. This is a early seventies era truck. Great old barn find. And then this is Nebraska Boys Ranch. 
fire truck. Got the combination light and siren. This is a really neat truck with the open top like that. See the old civil defense decal on there. Neat, neat old truck. And this here is another Divco dairy truck. Got some use and some miles on it for sure. Motorized milk wagon. Just kind of a little rundown of how the milk delivery was. Robert's Dairy. Just kind of another view of this side of the fire truck. This one's pretty rough. You see the floor's rusted out. But really not the end of the world for one of these because a lot of that's basic sheet metal that you can use a shear and a break and roll some patches and some time and some welding wire and have her looking good again. God, this will 48 to 50 Ford cab over. What a piece of history that truck is. This is an old corn harvester guard that somebody's made out of an antique, I believe a DX porcelain sign. <laughs> Flip it up here. That's what it was, DX sign repurposed into a corn sheller guard.